Hello and welcome to a new video. In this video, we'll talk about how to use generative AI within Lens Studio to create Snapchat filters. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Lens Studio is basically a tool used by creators like me to create Snapchat filters. If you want to know more about it, you can come to ar.snap.com and go through the website and the documentation to learn more about the software. And if you want to learn how to use it, you can go to the learn tab where they have extensive curriculum on how to use Lens Studio to create effects. And if you come back here and go to the download section, this is where you can download the latest stable version of Lens Studio to use on your system. But we are not talking about the stable version today. We're talking about the beta version. If you scroll down, you will see the Lens Studio 5.0 beta version. Now the latest patch is 5.0.2. This is what we will be using today to create generative AI effects. For the purpose of this video, I'll be assuming that you know the fundamentals of Lens Studio and know your way around the software that you already know the basics of Lens Studio and how to go about using it. Once you have installed Lens Studio 5.0, you can launch it here. I have set up an example for our first feature of generative AI in Lens Studio 5.0 that is texture generation. If you go into asset browser, go under generative AI, look at texture generation, it will open our prompt window. This is where the magic happens. And if you are someone who already has experience with stable diffusion or other models that create images, you need to understand one thing that this works differently. The models being used here to create the textures are very specifically trained. For example, this texture generation model is very specifically trained to create textures. Here you can see that there are five fields within texture generation. The first one being prompt where you type a prompt and there is seed, gen steps, guidance scale and negative prompt. The prompt section is basically where you write what kind of texture you're trying to generate. For example, here I'm trying to create the image of a flying fox. Okay, so that is not what I was looking for. But that is where the rest of the fields come into play. As you can see, the second field is seed. Unfortunately, this is not something we can use because there is no functional way of using it at the moment within Lens Studio. There is a function for it, but we can't use it at the moment because there is no way to read the seed of the image you have generated. Uh, the first thing you need to understand is that this is a beta version. So there are improvements happening as we speak. There are something that we can do to kind of fix this image basically uh, the first thing we can do is using enhancers there are some examples uh, given under the prompt section that you can use if you're someone who's coming from stable diffusion um, those enhancers or modifiers don't seem to work properly here um, from my experience using the enhancers given under the prompt section work better than using custom um, modifiers with that being said there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind when you're writing the prompt that is the first word has the highest value when it comes to your prompt. Now see what happens when I switch flying and fox in the phrase that I give. So now here I switched the first word from flying to fox. So now the importance was given to fox compared to the flying element of the prompt. Now whether this is a desirable outcome or not, I will leave that up to you. We can also add some enhancers like tileable, which basically means we want the image that is being generated to be tileable uh, next to each other. So it creates a pattern and we, we can also make it symmetrical. Let's hit regenerate. So that is the result we got. Before applying it to the cube that I've already prepared and showing it to you what it looks like. Gen steps is basically how much you want the AI to work on the texture. For example, if I take it down to 10 steps and hit regenerate, see what happens. See, it looks very crude. It looks very rudimentary. It does not create a proper image. The closest example that I can think of for this is uh, quality. Uh, the more steps you have, the more effort the AI will put in to create the image. Coming on to guidance scale, guidance scale is basically how strict do you want to be with your prompt? Do you want the AI to create the specific prompt you have given or do you want it to have some creative liberty as in you will let it be random a little bit. So the lower the number is here, the more random the AI will be. So for example, it is at 7.5 where we are saying stick to my prompt uh, mostly but also throw in some randomness sorry lens studio crashed so i had to set everything up again so things might look a little different um and it will happen uh, to you when you are using lens studio beta 
and not the stable version if you're using the beta version you'll see that it crashes a lot and you know there are a lot of bugs and stuff if that happens here is a report and issue button you report the issue and the next patch so i was talking about guidance scale here at 7.5 see what happens when i go to 3 let's say and hit regenerate so yeah that is the result we get because the number is low ai has the freedom to use randomness in the image that it is creating now if i take it to let's say 10 i say no deviation allowed from the prompt i give let's see what it does that is the result we get so that is gen steps and guardian scale negative prompts is something that is very useful when creating images this helps you eliminate the things you don't want to have in your images for example i have some negative prompts here you don't want something blurry or distorted ugly is a prompt that is very commonly used but i don't know what parameters it has but i just know that it works to create good images so after entering some negative prompts uh, let's hit regenerate and see what happens so that is the result we get with the negative prompts um, it is not exactly um, a stunning image but i think it is really better than what we started with one thing you need to remember is that this is specifically meant to create textures it is not meant to create art it is meant to create textures for the assets uh, that you will use in your effect so let's import it i hit apply and it will be imported in the asset library now we go to the pbr material that is attached to the mesh example mesh and we drag the texture into base texture so that is what we get so if you go here we see the tileable and symmetrical prompts that we gave it at work it nicely wraps around the asset properly so yeah, that is what i meant when i talked about how this tool is meant to create textures and not uh, images per se the second thing that i want to show you is face mask generation let's delete this go to our front cam go into our scene face face mask there we have a simple face mask and we will create a face mask using ai we'll go into asset generative ai face mask generation here we have similar fields we have less options to customize it this is very specifically trained to create face mask textures no matter what prompt to enter it will try to extrapolate it to create a face mask design out of it even if i give it an abstract theme like christmas let's say it's a festival that is the result we get you see i did not mention that i want a face mask i did not mention that i want a hat or any of the snow design i just said christmas it took that prompt and came up with a face mask design on its own so similar to texture generation this is very tailored to creating face mask textures so keep that in mind when you're entering the prompt now let's throw in a symmetrical because i want the mask to be symmetrical on both sides even though it is now and in the first place i'll throw in face paint because if you remember the ai gives the first word the most importance the next word a little bit less important so it goes in decreasing order from the first word to the last so the most importance is given to the face paint prompt then the theme that is christmas then symmetrical and then vivid so let's hit regenerate that is the mask design we got let's hit apply it will come into our asset we go to face mask material we see the texture drag this drop this here and we get the design on the face as simple as that you can create a face mask lens or filter within seconds if you already know what kind of design you're looking for you just need to create a prompt based on your idea now last but not least and the most impressive feature in the lens studio 5.0 beta is the pbr generation let's go into asset browser generative ai and hit pbr material generation here basically the ai generates a pbr material that is physics based rendering material and all the maps required that is diffuse normals uh, the gloss map everything you need to make the pbr material function all the textures are generated by the ai we have three templates uh, within pbr generation that is sphere cube and face if you have an external 3d model that you have designed on your own or you have downloaded from sketchfab or other asset libraries you can import it here under source model and it will create the pbr material for that specific 3d model that you are sourcing here now i'll take sphere because you want to do planet earth but instead of just doing planet earth because this is a demo i'm showing you i want to throw in some enhancers before the prompt let's say hyper realistic sci-fi planet earth so now 
in order of decreasing value the ai will give the hyper realistic prompt the most important in the sci-fi prompt and then the planet earth prompt let's hit generate this takes a little bit more time compared to the other two because it's creating all the required textures for the 3d model so there it is the pbr material generated by the ai as well as the mesh you might have noticed that i did not import any kind of mesh into the scene yet because this will give me the mesh that i can import into this the ai took about one one and a half minute to generate this so i was just waiting for it to happen i'll hit apply and bring everything into my asset browser i will drag this into my scene there you can see it already i'll disable the face mask let's go to the back camera so you can see it clearly that is our planet earth there it is as you can see i will expand this preview a little bit so you can see clearly and as i rotate you can see that the entire sphere has its own texture it created a texture specific for this spherical shape now if i go into the material here i can adjust the metallic nature of it decrease the roughness to see the reflection I go into the light rotate the light you can see how all kinds of textures have been applied to it if i close in you can see how bumpy it looks because of the normal map and it has its own gloss map and everything this is something that fascinates me the most out of all three generative ai features because this makes 3d assets a lot more accessible to creators and it also brings down the barrier of entry to people who are not familiar with lens studio so they can come into lens studio and create their own filters and lenses within minutes and have them published so yeah those were the generative ai features within lens studio 5.0 beta that you can use to create filters for snapchat i was going to have a section on prompt engineering uh, on how to create specific prompts but when i was testing it within lens studio i saw that the ai models inside lens studio don't exactly work one to one compared to the stable diffusion uh, models on the internet but what i can do is tell you where you can get inspiration from for your prompts this is called prompt hero this is a website where people upload the images they have generated and the prompts that they use to create those images for example i really like this image of this person sitting on top of a hill i click on it and this is the image and this is the prompt that they use to generate this this is for mid journey but this is still helpful because you can see how they are writing the prompt and after going through a couple of prompts we can understand what kind of words people are using to describe the kind of image they want to get so that is where you can get inspiration from there are plenty of sites uh, you can find on the internet but that is one of the examples that i want to show you guys this video is basically to let you know how you can use generative ai and you can harness it to create really creative filters and lenses on snapchat on your own within minutes so yeah that is it for now i'll see you in the next one